Hey, you there! Me? Yes, beautiful lady. You will succeed in all you do today. Consider it your lucky day, so to speak. Lucky day? Yes, it'll be the best day of your life. If you were ever to play a game of chance, today would be the day. Shall I read your fortune? I'll tell you what your lucky number is. Mm. I do not fare well at gambling. This is horrible! Someone just fell from the sky! Is this part of my lucky day? It appears as though something is happening over there. Hey! But... I wonder if it could be some sort of festival. What's going on? Looks like someone collapsed. Some guy fell from a building nearby. Was it a suicide? Pardon me. Please let me through. Are you a doctor? Uh, no, I am not. Do you know this man? No, I do not know him whatsoever. Then why are you here? Um, today is supposed to be my lucky day, so I thought I might be of some use. Huh? <sighs> oh, you are still breathing. What luck. Hey, he's trying to say something. Sorry. quite able to hear you. Could you please repeat yourself? Oh. Hey, hang in there. He's not breathing. But where's the ambulance? Maybe that was a dying message? It sounded to me as though he was trying to say the number three. If I am not mistaken, those were the last words he uttered before death. I must not let them go to waste. Oh, if I rewind time, I can hear his message again. Repeatedly hearing someone's dying message is something only I can do. What are you mumbling about? If you're not gonna help, get out of the... Actually... Why not try to prevent him from dying in the first place instead? Protecting the people is part of my duties as a detective. I may still make it in time if I hurry. Hey, you there. Pardon me, I am in a hurry. This time. 
First was three. Next it was two. I wonder what it could mean. Hey, you there. <sighs> this is exhausting. I might not make it. Oh, perfect timing. Pardon me, please let me in. must have cushioned his fall. Hurry up and call an ambulance! Thank goodness. It is true. Today really is my lucky day. What a happy ending. What a happy ending. And that is what happened the other day. Not a happy ending at all! Nothing was solved! Did the guy live? Yes, he managed to survive. Although he is currently in a coma. So you still don't know why he fell from the sky? The newspaper says it was an attempted suicide. It seems he climbed over a fence on top of the building. I bet the peacekeepers made that up after another half-assed investigation. Regardless, it has nothing to do with us. I mean, you're right and all, but doesn't it bother you? That sure is a weird dying message. At first it was three, then two, then finally one, right? It's like a countdown or something. I've never heard of a changing dying message. That's because dying messages are normally a one-time event. So perhaps the message changed because I turned back time. No, that doesn't make sense. The victim had already fallen by the time you arrived at the scene. So whether it be a suicide or a homicide, the events leading up to the fall shouldn't have changed. And I doubt he'd want to tell you something different each time. What do you think, Alara? Should I assume you're requesting to hire me with that question? No, d d never mind then. It was dumb of me to ask. No matter the problem, asking for my assistance is the wisest choice one can make. Except you charge an arm and a leg each time. Naturally, I must charge an appropriate rate. Although, in this case, it doesn't seem like a criminal act. I suppose I don't mind, if we consider this a conversation among friends. Oh, so we're friends now. What's with a change of heart? I wonder why the dying message changed. Do you know why, Halara? I can deduce the possibilities. However, I cannot declare anything unless I investigate the scene myself. So an investigation is still necessary. You definitely want to remember this.
By the way, according to the newspaper, the victim fell from a four-story building. Floor one is a luxury brand shop. Floor two is a restaurant. Floor three is a beauty salon. And floor four is a casino. Each floor has windows facing the street that cannot be opened. Thus, it's very likely the victim fell from the rooftop. Do we have an ID on the victim? He's a 25-year-old man. He works at the shop on the first floor, but often goes to the other floors as a customer. So the people in the building were his acquaintances. There's still a chance someone else from the building took him up to the roof and pushed him off. Perhaps the dying message indicates who did it? If that was the case, then it's weird the message changed each time he got to the victim. Or maybe there's someone named 321? <laughs> that can't be it, right? You can't say that with certainty. Okay, fair enough. But that doesn't explain why the message changed. That reminds me. When the victim mentioned one the last time he spoke, he actually said there. There? Did he find something? That I do not know. Though he did look as though he was searching for something. What does that mean? The victim must have had something in his hand while he was falling. The impact of the fall caused him to drop it. I see. So the victim found the item, then left the message one. If you think about it that way, the victim's message makes sense. And it's likely the item is related to the case. Fubuki, did you find anything at the scene? My deepest apologies. I did not notice anything of the sort. Hmm... You may be careless, but I doubt you'd miss something so big you'd need two hands to hold it. Which means it had to be something small enough that it could be easily missed. Hold on. The victim must have held this thing in his hand the first time he fell. But instead of one, he said three that time. Was he holding something different each time he fell, or was he holding more than one thing? Considering when Fubuki turned back time, it's hard to believe he held something different each time. However, we cannot eliminate the possibility there may have been multiple items. Mm. I am now more lost than ever. If we follow the logic, we will always arrive at our destination. The truth. But I am truly lousy at that. Don't give up, princess. Let's start from the beginning. V very well. I shall try. Um, if the victim was holding something, that would be a key clue in this case, right? First, regarding the size of what he was holding... That's right. Even Fubuki, who was at the scene immediately after the victim fell, didn't notice that small item. Therefore, it's reasonable to believe that whatever he held was something that could fit in the palm of his hand. And the impact of the fall caused him to drop it. The third time, the victim realized he dropped it and appeared to be looking around for it. And when he saw it, he said, there, one. Hmm. But why would the victim mumble the word one after seeing it? Normally, that would mean that whatever was on the surface of the item displayed the number one, would it not? So the victim saw that and read the number one aloud. Huh? 
That's a dumb conclusion to make. No, that's a sensible way to think about it. It's logical as well. The victim saw it in Mumble 1, so we should assume it was actually written there. Are you serious? So, whatever it is has the numbers written on its surface, right? What is it then? I don't get it. In the beginning, he said three, not one. It's not strange at all, if we assume the number changes depending on the situation. The number can change? Wait, then that must be it! Whoa, Fubuki! Do you know what it is? Y yes Although it is just my guess. The item the victim was holding... Such as a die, or something. A die? Oh, I get it. The number would change depending on the roll. Hold on. It first went from 3 to 2. Isn't it strange the numbers weren't the same? Fubuki arrived at the scene after the victim fell. By that time, the die would have fallen from the victim's hand. Which means that whatever number turned up on the die should have been set by that point. It couldn't have changed. You're right. Do you have a counter-argument for this? In that case, perhaps this explains it. The angle from which he saw the die would have been different. The angle? The first time, the victim was lying face down. If there was a die in his line of sight, he would have only seen one side of it. What about the second time? In the second time, I arrived just a bit earlier, so I tried to help the victim up. At that moment, he probably saw the top side of the die. I see. So that's how it went. It's true that under normal circumstances, only the number on the top of a die is red. He landed on the taxi the third time, so it is possible that the roll of the die changed. Fubuki, you sure are sharp this morning. <laughs> really? So basically, it went like this. The victim fell from the rooftop while holding a die. He dropped it once he hit the ground. Which means the die was cast. As the victim was knocking on death's door, he mumbled whatever number he saw. Great job deducing that much, Fubuki! Does it appear that I'm becoming a better detective? Yeah, but not nearly as great as me. We still lack an answer regarding the final part. The final part? What was the victim trying to communicate with his dying message? Now that you mention it, you're totally right. Why did he even bother reading the number on the die? Perhaps it was to inform us of the identity of the culprit? There is no doubt that the die was meant to point out the culprit. Nearing death, the victim sought out the die to inform you of that. But in his days, the best he could do was say the number he saw. So the die was pointing out the culprit? Wait, wasn't there a place that had something to do with dice in the building the victim fell from? Oh, so perhaps the culprit was in there?
Was the culprit in the beauty salon on the third floor? What does a beauty salon have to do with dice? Um... Nothing, I suppose. Fubuki, are you sure you're not doing this on purpose? I am not! Anyway, moving on. Perhaps the culprit was in the casino on the fourth floor? That's probably it. You did it, princess. I didn't think you'd be able to figure it out. There is no way I could have done so on my own. You have my deepest thanks, Halara and Desuhiko. Yep. Now bow down to my charisma. Still, we're just making assumptions here. We have no solid evidence. If someone said we made it all up based on his dying words, that'd be the end of it. But we made so much progress in our investigation. Is there nothing to be done about it, Halara? It would be one thing if we had the die as evidence. But it would be extremely difficult to find now. If only I had noticed it and picked it up. No biggie. It's not something you'd notice normally. Uh, hey, Halara, what if you use your forte to find out where the die went? I can't use my abilities while the victim is still alive. Damn, you make it sound so ominous. Leaving this case alone is still a valid option. No one made a request for us to investigate, so it's not an urgent matter. The case will solve itself once the victim wakes up. The culprit might attack the victim again before that happens. Since they didn't get him the first time, they might try to finish the job. That would be terrible! This is all my responsibility! What should I do? I don't think there's any need for you to feel responsible, but... I wouldn't feel good about leaving this unsolved. Hey, Halara. Do you know of any ways around this? There is one. Stop teasing us and just say it! Oh, and before you ask, I'm not paying a damn thing! A clue, then. Ask the fortune teller. Are you a villager in an RPG or something? Uh, the fortune teller! Huh? Did something spring to mind? I told you in the beginning, remember? A fortune teller approached me! What's that got to do with this case? You should interrogate that fortune teller about the casino. You may hear something... interesting. I understand! I shall depart after breakfast. But hey, are you going alone? Ugh, fine, I'll join you. Alara, you're coming with, right? I'm not going without a formal request. So much for being friends. All you have done is more than enough for me. Thank you very much. I can handle the rest on my own. Uh, I'm here too, you know. Hey, you there! Hmm? Uh, us? Yes, you lovebirds. You make one fine pair. You will succeed in all you do today. Consider it your lucky day, so to speak. Lucky day? Yes, it'll be the best day of your life. If you were ever to play a game of chance, today would be the day. 
Shall I read your fortune? I'll tell you what your lucky number is. Yes, please. Hmm. It appears that multiples of three are your lucky numbers. If you're going to gamble, be sure to bet on increments of three. I get it. This is what Hilaro is getting at. What do you mean? You're in bed with that casino up ahead, aren't you? What are you saying? Casino? I don't know what you're talking about. You claim we have good luck to scam us at the casino. That's a baseless accusation. I'm just an ordinary fortune teller. You must have heard about the guy who fell from the casino's building. The victim was nearly killed by someone who works there. I bet he knew too much about your secret. If you know something, you better cough it up now. Or you might be next. <laughs> and if you're working with dangerous people, you should call it quits today. We can take care of the rest, so tell us what you know. <laughs> As you said, my job is to lure customers in and guide them to the casino. The lucky number thing is all a lie. In fact, if they pick those numbers, they will surely lose. But I truly believed it was my lucky day. I'm sorry. I actually don't know how to tell anyone's fortune. I just followed the manual. And that manual was made by the casino? Yes. Cheating is rampant in the casino. They really conduct some dirty business there. Do you know the man who fell from the building? Yes. He's what they call a hired plant. He mixes in with the customers and steers them a certain way so the casino can cheat them. So, my ears perked up when I heard he attempted to kill himself. I knew he'd made a mistake and was being silenced. I see. So that's what it was. Hey! Are you really going to do something about them? If they find out I told you all this... Leave it to me. Who do you think I am? I am the superstar detective, slayer of evil, Desuhiko Thunderbolt! That's not very reassuring. It appears the entire casino is in on this crime. There will only be more victims if we leave them be. We might as well see this through to the end. Though, I bet the Chief would tell us to stay out of trouble. But what shall we do? We like even a single piece of evidence. I would feel terrible if we had to involve the fortune teller more than necessary. I guess we'll have to rush in from the front. Which means... We are going on an adventure! Yeah! Are they really gonna be all right? This looks like the place. Indeed. Do you have a plan, Desuhiko? Yeah, of course. The plan name is Leave Things to Chance. Sounds exciting! Let's go, Fubuki! Right! Wait! Lara, what are you doing here? I knew you'd rush in without a plan. You are correct, Lara! Carelessly sowing confusion will simply result in more victims. Don't be so rash. Trying to get in our way. It'd be one thing if you just stayed out of it. 
I'm saying the two of you don't stand a chance. If you're up against a casino, let me handle it. Huh? Are you going to help us? Bet on me and you are sure to win. Listen, here's the plan. Welcome. I'd like to convert all this into chips. Uh, right away. Call the owner over. I'd like to play a game. Um. Tell the owner I want to talk to him about that attempted suicide. Understood. How can I help you? You don't seem affiliated with the Peacekeepers. I'll be direct. You tried to erase one of your hired plants. What are you talking about? I'll bet all of my chips. If you win, then this issue will disappear. We'll conclude our investigation and never return. And of course, you can keep all the chips. Halora, are you sure about this? And if you win? You will confess your crimes and turn yourself into the peacekeepers. Hmm. Very well. I don't know what crime you're speaking of, but as the owner of the casino, I cannot turn down such a direct challenge. I expect you to keep your word. Of course, and you as well. So, what would you like to play? Bring some dice. A game of craps? Yes. But let's cut out all of the complicated rules. This game will consist of four dice. Each player will take two and roll them at the same time. Whoever gets exactly seven wins. If both rolls land on seven, then it's a draw and the game continues. Very well. We will prepare the dice. Are you fine with that? I don't mind. You'll roll the dice. What? Me? But you are far better at gambling, Laura. I'm going to find out what's going on. Just roll the dice like you normally would. However, if the opponent rolls a seven, turn back time. Oh, right! I do have that ability! Are you ready? Let's play! Well, well. Looks like that's game. However, if the opponent rolls a seven, turn back time. Palara, I just turned back time. You rolled a seven right at the start. And my roll was terrible, by the way. I completely lost. I knew it. But you can do this as many times as you want. That's your strength. R right. Are you done with your huddle? 
No amount of planning will help with dice. You must let luck take over from here. Now, let us play. Yes, game on! This time... Well, well. Looks like that's game. However, if the opponent rolls a seven, turn back time. <sighs> I have returned. This is the second time. The opponent rolled seven on the first throw both times. The timing of the dice roll was different from before, so I thought there would be different numbers. Are casino owners blessed with natural luck? No, it's not luck. He's probably cheating. Ch cheating Seems like he's going all out. Well then, there's no reason for us to hold back either. But what are you going to do? If he can cast a seven each time through cheating, no amount of turning back time will help. Moreover, there is a limit to how many times I can use my ability. There is a way to prevent his cheating. Really? However, prevention doesn't guarantee us victory. In order for us to win, you must roll a seven. Can you do it this time, Fubuki? I can certainly try. I became a detective by challenging my own fate. I refuse to lose here. I'll join you in your battle. Right! Are you done with your little meeting? You can talk all you want, but I don't think it will change the numbers on the dice. Now. Shall we play? Before we begin, I'm thirsty. Can I get some water? Very well. Oh, excuse me. What are you trying to do? My hands slip. Let's begin. Very well. This game won't end until you roll a seven. Leave it to me! Come on, seven. Come on, seven. There! Y you How did you? I can't lose with these dice! Seems like the game is over. You must now confess your crimes. I'm glad to see you have regained consciousness. Are you all right after that awful fall? What? No, it's me, Desuhiko. Hmm? We went over this before we entered the casino. Were you even listening? As I suspected, the dice used by the casino were rigged. The victim must have intended to let others know about it with a dying message. It was obvious they'd cheat if we challenged them to a match involving dice. Which is where I came in. Well, I distracted the staff. Alara messed with the dice. So that is what happened. I 
was only able to win thanks to Halara. No. I didn't touch your dice, Fubuki. Huh? Then I really rolled a seven on my own? Yes. You won that game. Really? Thank goodness! I won that game! Great job, Princess! Yes! Even if it was just a little bit, I believe I grew as a detective. has been completely obsessed since that day. <sighs> There's no way I can win against someone who can turn back time. How oh, rude. I would never cheat like that. Come on, Desuhiko. One more game. <laughs> <laughs> 